We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio, heard on the Radio America Network, coast to coast. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. We're joined back again by Liberty Nation's executive editor, Lisa K. Donna. Earlier in the show, we were talking about Joe Biden's worsening condition and the way the Fourth Estate have been injecting themselves into every story, personalizing things with seemingly no point. But now, Lisa, what I'd like to carry on with, if we may, is around the narrative that surrounds Joe Biden. So up until the debate, the debate again, let's call it, because I like every word with the again. Uh, Please, no gates, no debate gates. No gates, gate. no gates, no debate gate, just debate yeah. again. Thank you. <laughs> debate again. Uh, it's a nice, you know, very, very simple. Got a ring to it. Um, so until that point, we have been hearing that Joe Biden is the top of his game. That, and here's the word, here's the word, and you're going to giggle when you hear it, sharp. Now, I got a video for you, Lisa, and it is pundits, talking heads, celebrities. It's actually a six-minute-plus compilation of people using the exact same terminology. Now, for those of you who are... I just uh, want to show them sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack, yeah. <laughs> that's so a, that's a bent tack. In radio, that's not you a... have to imagine tack. So it's, a, it's an over-six-minute compilation of all the people saying Joe Biden is sharp. He's sharp. He's so sharp. He's sharp as a tack. And the fans of uh, the James Bond books, Ian Fleming, uh, will know that there's a saying that once is coincidence, twice is happenstance, and third time is enemy action. But a six-minute compilation, that is organized propaganda, if it is anything. Now, I'm, I'm just going to play you just one minute of this, Lisa, so you can see what it uh, sounds like and come back and give me your thoughts on that. Okay, okay. This is a man who is sharp, who is on top of his game, who knows what's going on. He's smart. He's on his game. His mental acuity is great. This is a very sharp president. Um, and the people that I've talked to say he's, he's as sharp as a tack. He, he's fine. Right. What do you think? Well, everyone said it. He's sharp as a tack. And then when he gets on TV and he's not sharp as a tack, they go, oh, gee, what happened? Well, did they forget that some of them handed in their questions? Somebody just lost their job over that now. Mm. I'm not sure it's fair because so many people handed in their questions over the last three and a half years. But yeah, anyway, Donna Brazil, Hillary Clinton. I, oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, no, that was <laughs> before. Then, you know, there's the cheat sheets, like you're going to walk up these steps, mm. you're going to go here, you're going to ask this person, you turn it over, it's highlighted in yellow. You know, look, the guy, you know, has an issue, obviously, but... I think the media it was it was re only responsible for them to report on what they saw and what they heard instead of trying to whitewash it and cover it up because now it's a big holy mess mm. for the Democratic Party and um you know it's a big holy mess for much of the much of the media too and it's a big holy mess for Joe Biden and his family. Here's the thing that really gets me on this Lisa is as you pointed out earlier in the show We've been writing about Joe Biden's cognitive decline for, for months, year, years, extensively, exhaustively, but never egregiously. Uh, and right. we've been writing about this and it's been obvious to us and it's been obvious to half the nation, at least. Yeah, but then, a portion of the electorate. Yeah. Then you have the media, uh, the, the mainstream left leaning fourth estate. And apparently, if they are to be believed, they didn't realize any of this until those fatal 90 minutes. Now, that, that, really, that really gets me because that beggars belief. Mm. Nobody could be in the presence of this gentleman and say that he's sharp as a tack. That's just disingenuous and it's a lie. Even worse, they were saying uh, there was a whole media narrative in the run-up to the debate, the debate again. We'll keep that in there, debate again. In the run-up to that, there was this whole media thing, two-prong attack here saying Donald Trump's slipping. Donald Trump might oh, have right. pre-dementia. Right. And right. then they also say, don't believe your lying eyes. These are what's called cheap fakes. Now, they, they've made that word up as much as I've made up debate again. Right. Right. But they try to tell people, no, 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 no. It's all taken out of context. There's always something here. It's fake. You're not seeing what's actually really happening. 
And then we saw what really happened in real time. And they turn around and say, oh my goodness, how could we ever have missed this? So I'm it, shocked. No, right. it's shocked, yeah. yeah. So the, there's one of three things happening, I reckon, here, Lisa. Number one is they're just shamelessly lying because they got caught out. Number two, they've got this weird mind block on when it comes to Joe Biden. Or number three, they're just not very good at their jobs. Well, does it have to be one, two or three? or can It, it can be, be all three. You know? <laughs> it can I be mean, all it three. Could, it could easily be a combination. Mm. You know, people see what they want to see and ignore the rest, as someone once said. And, you know, that's really the problem when you Paul, have... Paul Simon and, uh, Paul Simon yeah. and Art Garfunkel, right? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, so don't pin me down on that one. But, you know, I think that's why it's important to get different points of view. It's important to look at different media outlets. I mean, I'll, I'll read, you know, the left as much as I'll read the right just mm. to see what's going on. But, you know, you've got... You've got mountains of stuff like Joe Scarborough saying he's sharp as a tack on Morning Joe. And, you know, you've got all these people. It didn't have to be a battle. It should have just been, you know, honestly reporting what was going on. And now it's a meltdown. It's a total and complete meltdown. Yeah, they, they've, they've jettisoned any ounce of credibility that was remaining to them by by feigning this shock that they've now realized what everybody else realized. Now that brings us to another question. The media is now accepting that Joe Biden, he's in a bad way and it's better for right. it. You know, I, I guess you see it on the front pages of Washington DC's most prominent paper. Oh, the they can't Times. dump him as faster than, you know, they, they're just dumping every day. Yeah. I mean, now we have congressmen, we've got Nadler coming out. Yeah. Uh, supposedly Warner was going to come out, but I, I'm thinking somebody stomped on him because he's kind of backpedaled a little bit. But every day it's drip, drip, drip. Yeah. Got to get rid of him at the top of the ticket. And now everybody's kind of turning towards Kamala Harris. Well, that brings me to the very next thing. So Joe Biden, uh, for three years, three and a half years, we've watched his slow and steady yet no, not steady, I guess, precipitous decline. And the media on the left have ignored it. They've covered it up and they've leveled accusations at media on the right or more conservative media uh, of lying, of obfuscating, of taking things out of context to right. bolster their man in the White House as they see it. Mm -hmm. Now that it looks to be their gal in the White House, Kamala Harris, uh, if Indeed. Or we're just speculating. Wild we are, speculation. of course, just speculating. Um, maybe, maybe not wild, maybe semi-educated speculation, sure. but that seems to be where the tables are turned at the moment. But what I've noticed is a tranche of stories saying about how effective she is, how she's been sidelined during the presidency by being given an impossible task to go and find the root, for example, to go and find the root causes of migration. Again, this is a, and I don't like to use the term gaslighting, but that's really what it is. The, the root cause of migration is America welcomes you. Come and get a free hotel room. We'll get you on some welfare and we'll get you processed. That's the root cause of the mass migration, as everybody knows. And the people who say they don't know it are lying or they have an agenda. Um, and so... Well, it, it, They've started these softly, softly articles about Kamala Harris, but are they going to ignore her failings as much as they ignored Joe Biden's? Well, I was just listening this morning to, uh, I believe it was on Fox and Friends, and they were playing a couple clips of her word salads. They call them word salads. And she does have a tendency to um, state the obvious, like school buses are yellow, you know, I don't even know where to go with that one. I'm some sort of frozen, you know, school buses are yellow. What do you do with that? But she does have a tendency to kind of get bollocked up in her word salad. Mm. And that should be picked up by the left and the right and the people in the middle. Let's just call it as we see it. I mean, that's what journalism used to be. Call it as we see it. Not that it was perfect and not that everybody was always on the same page. But, you know, huge cover-ups are, are no way to go about your business. Yeah, it, it seems that... Uh... 
in in the efforts to beat Donald Trump, the left leaning media, it's willing to commit all kinds of journalistic sins. I mean, that they just don't really seem to care about the the narratives they're putting out there. They don't seem to care about the falsehoods that they're they're pushing just to try and gain a point here, a point there. And Lisa, final word for you. Can journalism in this form survive? Well, I think this has been a huge wake-up call, at least to the left, um, in journalism. And it would be wise if they took a page out of this and learned a few lessons. Um, number one, report on what you see and hear, but it doesn't have to be through your personal lens. Uh, number two, be real with the people that you're, who are your readership, your listenership, your viewership. And um, I think those two things are, are really important. If, if you want to have any slice of integrity in the journalistic world. Lisa K. Donna, executive editor of Liberty Nation. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. And that's all we have time for on this week's edition of Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I've been your host, Mark Angelides. I'd like to thank our special guests, columnist and author, Cal Thomas, and Liberty Nation's executive editor, Lisa K. Donna. And thanks to you at home for being here, taking the time to tune in each and every week. We appreciate you. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.